Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Eine Lesung aus dem Buch des Propheten Jesaja. Höret des Herrn Wort, ihr Herren von Sodom. Nimm zu Ohren die Weisung unseres Gottes, du Volk von Gomorra. Was soll mir die Menge eurer Opfer, spricht der Herr. Ich bin satt der Brandopfer von Widdern und des Fettes von Mastkälbern und habe kein Gefallen am Blut der Stiere, der Lämmer und Böcke. Wenn ihr kommt zu erscheinen vor meinem Angesicht, wer fordert denn von euch, dass ihr meine Vorhöfe zertretet? Bringt nicht mehr da so vergebliche Speisopfer. Das Räucherwerk ist mir ein Gräuel. Neumond und Sabbat, den Ruf zur Versammlung, Frevel und Festversammlung, ich mag es nicht. Meine Seele ist Feind euren Neumonden und Jahresfesten. Sie sind mir eine Last. Ich bin müde, sie zu tragen. Und wenn ihr auch eure Hände ausbreitet, verberge ich doch meine Augen vor euch. Und wenn ihr auch viel betet, höre ich euch doch nicht, denn eure Hände sind voll Blut. Wascht euch, reinigt euch, tut eure bösen Taten aus meinen Augen. Lasst ab vom Bösen, lernt Gutes tun. Trachtet nach Recht, helft den Unterdrückten, schafft den Weisen Recht, führt der Witwen Sache. So kommt denn und lasst uns miteinander rechten, spricht der Herr. Wenn eure Sünde auch blutrot ist, soll sie doch schneeweiß werden. Und wenn sie rot ist wie purpur, soll sie doch wie Wolle werden. The Word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 32 responsively. I will begin. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. While I, he I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them.
a reading from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ the word of the Lord The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you.
Please be seated. Dear fellow Christians, a little girl goes up to a priest one day to confess her sins. I believe I'm guilty of the sin of vanity, the girl told in the confessional box. To which the priest responds, why do you think that? The girl tells him, well, every morning I look at myself in the mirror and think how beautiful I am. Then the priest appeases the girl, oh, don't worry, that's not a sin, that's just a mistake. This is one example where the sense of self and the awareness of others don't fit. We heard in the gospel about a guy where people were quite concurrent in their decision what to think about him. He's working hand in hand with the Roman occupation force in Israel. He's a collaborator, a tax collector. And for his fellow countrymen, it is sure that he collects more than he should. In short, he exploits his own people. His name, Zacchaeus. And of all the people that Jesus is meeting on his way to Jerusalem here in Jericho, it is of all things Zacchaeus, where Jesus invites himself and his company for dinner. The bystanders are angry. Why? Because normally no one invites himself to other people's home? No, the gospel explains us why. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. There it is again, the favorite topic in church. Sin. Sometimes at least it seems that there are few topics which are likewise prominent. And the press coverage about the abuse scandal in the church gives us the impression that sin is solely connected with our bodies. And if you investigate the history of church teaching, that is far from being a common given. The joke about the girl who thinks she is so beautiful comes closer to the traditional teaching. Vanity is on top of the traditional list in Latin superbia, which also means pride or arrogance. The second deadly sin to follow is also not a sin of body, but of mind. It is greed or avarice or cupidity. These two of the list of seven are followed by lust, by wrath or hatred, by gluttony or overconsumption, by envy, and by sloth or ignorance. The Catholic Church, the Protestant churches, and probably also the Anglican Church have spent centuries to awaken the awareness of the faithful that they are all sinners. Everybody of us is a little Zacchaeus. The mainline churches confined the excessive talk on sin in the recent decades. Yet is a concentration on the sinful man, sinfulness of men and women helpful? to solve the problems of the world? Is it a smart educational concept to make people who already feel helpless and miserable feel even more miserable? I doubt that. I think that the preaching on sin over the last centuries may have created more difficulties than it resolved. The Eastern Orthodox churches have a different take on sin. Sin is considered to be a disease, a spiritual disease. 
And since diseases are widespread, the burden of guilt on each other, on the individual, seems not so burdensome like in the West. And the cure for sin is not to feel miserable. The cure for sin is to be healed by the touch and the presence of the divine. In my estimation, Jesus would go along with the orthodox view. Look at the last sentence of the gospel. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The healing of Zacchaeus happens very quickly, almost instantly. The gospel reads, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. At the end of a healing process, one is entitled to expect consequences and alteration. In the gospel, we can see this alteration. Zacchaeus grows out of himself. Of his physical nature, he shows shortness. And by his social esteem, he moves on a very low level. But he does more than the law had asked of him. Maybe he does even more than Jesus had expected of him. He grows out of himself. He outgrows certainly the role expectation of the bystanders and those who would claim for themselves a profound knowledge of decent religion. Well, what is therefore the moral of the story? The moral is that there is no morality in the story. At least no morality so often heard from churches or free-floating preachers. You have to behave in a certain way. You have to avoid this and that. You have to treat doubts and open questions like a taboo. As a Christian, you have to have certain political opinions and do so much hours of social work. The moral of the story is the absolutely amazing lack of presuppositions which Jesus shows in his encounters with people. No requirements for having dinner with Jesus. We in the church overlooked that for too long when we developed our theologies of the Last Supper. Luke is fond of a Jesus who turns popular habits upside down. Not the ethical correctness makes an encounter with Jesus possible. But the encounter with Jesus opens people to be more ethically sensitive. We can grow out of ourselves as well as Zacchaeus. The encounter with Jesus is able to change us. Yet this changes nothing in our control or in our planning. Maybe we are physically not nearly as short as Zacchaeus has been. But we also know of impediments and obstacles of growing. Jesus wants to set us free from those impediments and obstacles, even those that were bequeathed on us. Jesus wants us to grow in our faith and in our love, expand ourselves beyond what we are already gifted with now. Jesus wants us to grow away from the popular habit of accumulating or heaping up things and people in order to feel that we are worthy. Jesus wants us to outgrow the popular habit of being more tinsel and glitter than being true to ourselves. In God's eyes, we are taller. 
and even more lovable than we consider ourselves to be. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith and the formula we are using, the great uh, creed, the Nicene Creed, that is common to the Eastern Orthodox churches and to the Western churches. It's an ecumenical creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from light, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. To him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guide the people. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Especially pray today for Annick, Rudiger, Bruce, Lisa, Madeline and Riley, Dominic, Dennis and Chantal. 
Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Especially pray today for Cindy Rosenmeyer, Janice Wiedemann and Eric Döner. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus Christ, you have said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God, against our neighbors, and against ourselves. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also Please be seated for the announcements. Before I forget, I have been asked to give you the hint that the new icon is out. So you can gather that up and take that home when you, after, after coffee hour, is there coffee hour? Yes, so that's another announcement. There is coffee hour today. Maybe not everybody knows me. I lived in Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt. I lived in Munich for five years and was here and in the old Catholic congregations and Billy Broads. Uh, since 2018, I have been, well, I've been sent to the old Catholic parish in Kaufbeuren, have been elected the rector there. And so I'm now here as the old Catholic rector of Kaufbeuren. We had mass at 9.30 this morning already. So I could manage to jump into the car. Freeway was quite clear, so I could be here this morning. But it's a pleasure. Uh, I always like to do Anglican services. I don't know if you realize that, but I do. <laughs> um, and now I ask somebody of the congregation to come forward and do the rest of the announcement, the, the important announcements. Oh, good morning, everybody. This is just a few words about our Ukraine project. First of all, a big thank you to those who kindly contributed to the project, either financially or by bringing items to church. Several Ukrainian families will shortly be moving into the accommodation acquired by the Johannita in Zoln. We have in the meantime purchased bedding, towels, tea towels and other household items from our outreach budget. These and the items collected have now been transferred to Zollen. 
we will shortly be drawing up a new list of items required for the apartments, and this will be published in the bulletin within the next few weeks. Thank you for your support. Next Sunday, we will celebrate and observe all saints and all soul service. So if you want to bring some memorable for your loved ones, you can bring them along and place them after your communion on the uh, table which you will set up or put a candle there, whatever you choose to do. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to you all the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alle Herrlichkeit und Ehre, jetzt und in Ewigkeit. Amen. With the words Christ Jesus gave us, we now pray.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. This is the banquet of Christ. In his kingdom, there are no outcasts. Wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at God's team. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as you promised to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care. Now, and forever. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with your people and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our brother and Lord. And the blessing of the holy and undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and among those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.